Hey guys, so I was just recently listening to the series by John MacArthur on the Gospel According to Jesus because I know that John MacArthur has many problems, he's a Calvinist wrong about many things, but he is very good about refuting the false doctrine of easy believism. And so I wanted to learn more what he had to say about that. And through listening to this, um, I think that I have to take back an interpretation of scripture that I have previously taught, and that is on the, the, the Pearl of Great Price parable. Um, where it says the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant man, you know, seeking goodly pearls. And I interpreted that previously, that the merchant man was the Lord Jesus Christ, and the pearl of great price is the church, because I listened to a teaching from a ministry called the Christian Worship Hour, and they taught that, and I thought it sounded really good and uh, accurate, so I made that video, and unfortunately I told people about the video, and they agreed, and I feel kind of sick now that I have done this, and, but um, sometimes parables are a little hard to interpret, but now John MacArthur interprets that parable differently, and I think that I agree with some statements that he has said, and uh, I mean, it's a, it's a really short parable, it's like, you know, one verse, and so there's not a whole lot to, to, to go with, but um, let's see here. Well, there's a couple of reasons why I interpreted it previously that the kingdom of heaven, uh, this, this parable is, uh, the merchant man is Jesus and the, the pearl is the church. Well, uh, because previously there are parables before this that, that talk about a man like a man sowing in a field, and then Jesus interprets it and says the man is the son of man. So it seems logical to continue with this idea that, you know, when it says a merchant, there's a merchant man, that that man, again, is the son of man. But that doesn't necessarily have to be so. And then also, um, I heard it said, and I believe it to be true, that heaven can't be purchased. Um, you know, we can't buy our salvation, but we do know that, that it says that Christ bought the church, so we can, so that seems to fit, right? But that doesn't, and that's, that doesn't have to be the idea that this parable is trying to get across. You know, I'm learning more about figures of speech, and it's really what is the idea trying to be expressed here? You know, we don't take everything in, in these parables literally. So, you know, is the idea trying to be expressed really that something is purchased? That's not really, you know, the main point here. Um, so John MacArthur said some things that really stuck out to me. He said, well, he says, I don't see how, you know, goodly pearls, um, how sinners can be seen as goodly pearls. Um, and that makes sense to me. I think that I agree with that. And really, so this parable is something else that can be used to refute easy believism. So we're really talking about a total commitment here um, for, for somebody, you know, for salvation. Um, doesn't have to do with purchasing anything, but, you know, it reminds me of when the rich young ruler comes to Jesus you know, it says, I will follow you, and he says, you know, or he says, what must I do to inherit eternal life, I guess, and uh, says he's kept all the commandments, and Jesus says, go and sell everything you have, you know, and the idea is not that you have to sell everything you have to get into heaven, obviously, but there does have to be a total commitment. You have to, to be saved, you're going to have to you're either going to live for self and die in your sins or you're going to uh, or you're going to, you know, die to self and live for Christ. You know, you have to make that choice um, for salvation. So I actually like this interpretation better. I think it's more accurate, and it does seem kind of bizarre now looking back to interpret that the merchant man is the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, it seems like a lot of things fit. You know, Christ did purchase the church. 
um, you know, and other things that can be compared there. Uh, but, you know, we have to be careful when we're looking at these parables. And I've wanted to do a study on parables for a long time, but every time I get into it, then I have a lot of questions, and I'm like, nope, I'm just going to look at something else. So it's going to be a while before I go through the parables. Um, but every now and then, I guess, like now, when I figure something out, I'll try to share that. Um, I think another thing that... Um, People get confused, which I need to look into more, but there's a parable of the kingdom of heaven is like a net, you know, that, that gets fish, you know, throws out the bad ones, keeps the good ones, and also the parable of the tares. And uh, I think that some people, even myself, and I don't know if everybody does, but look at they look at this those parables and they think that the tares are like professing believers and, uh, you know, the wheat are the Christians. So he separates, you know, the false believers from the true believers. But, and they look at the one with the net and they'll think like, well, the ocean is the world and the net is, you know, again, it's collecting the professing believers and the true believers and separating them. But I think that the reality is that the tares are just people who aren't saved in general. Whether they're professing believers or complete unbelievers, they're just all lost people. And the wheat are the saved people. And so the net, again, represents the world. And there's lost people and there's saved people. People are going to go to heaven or they're going to go to hell. So I hope you understand what I'm trying to say there, but... I need to look into those more. But I really think that the Pearl of Great Price and even the one before it, the treasure hidden in the field, um, they have to do with salvation. And so, you know, a man hears that he can be saved from his sins, that he can have eternal life. And so when he hears that news, then... Um, you know, he makes a total commitment to Jesus Christ as Lord. Jesus said that you must deny yourself, pick up your cross, and carry it daily. So, th these parables, the treasure hidden in the field and the pearl of great price, are not talking about Jesus coming to earth and purchasing the church with his blood. They are talking about a person's total commitment to Christ, dying to self for salvation. And uh, so, I'm sorry that I've gotten that wrong, and it really sucks, but, you know, it's going to happen from time to time. So, I truly believe that now that this is the, the more correct interpretation. Um, I guess that's it. Thanks for watching. God bless. Oh. Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven.